there is a place that is above all others. A place where dreams are chased above the clouds. The top of the world where the wind is fiercest is a desolate, deathly place where humans cannot live. Where only the strong and lucky survive. When I was a boy, my father told me that the highest mountain in the world is the home of the gods. My father warned me about the dangers on Everest. But I always felt kind of a hunger inside to live up to his legend. So I have to try it. Follow a team of climbers to a place few have dared to go and discover how they overcame tragedy to find hope, triumph, and inspiration on the world's highest mountain. Everest, a film for IMAX and giant screen theaters. Howdy folks, Craig Mavati here at the Houston Museum of Natural Science and the HMS Beyond Bones podcast. Today, we are talking to one of the stars of the 1998 documentary Everest, Araceli Sagara Roca. I, I still need to learn how to roll my R's. I, I just never learned. Anyway, Araceli is going to be talking about Everest, climbing Everest, and what that means for, well, for your soul. Everybody's got their own Everest to climb, as she will, uh, she'll be talking about. Check it out. You're one of the few people who have made it to the top, and that is just something that I see you as almost like an astronaut, because that is such a big accomplishment. And the movie, uh, as everybody knows, it's seen it. It's coming up on the 25th anniversary release of it, and we are releasing it in the uh, Wortham Giant Screen Theater here at HMS. And we want everybody to see it. We want ever, especially when it gets warm outside. You guys are going to want to see. A movie like Everest, because I, I don't know if you've ever been here, Araceli, <laughs> here in Houston, but uh, in about a week or two, it's going to get really nasty and gross and humid. Uh, so we, we need the we need to we need these these uh, Everest views to sort of calm us down. So, uh, Kat, you and Araceli, I want you to sort of, you know, go through the the, the story of Everest, if you can. So I wanted Araceli to tell us. She was going to tell us about, she. so she, she's been to Everest, um, what draws people to it, and why she doesn't feel the need to <laughs> revisit Everest again. And it was a great answer. Yeah. So I'd like her to share that with us. Well, yeah, well, first of all, when you say so, that idea that you just bring at the very beginning, that thinking that uh, we are like astronauts, you know, that's a very common point of view when uh, you see things that you've never done. But uh, I just want to bring a very basic idea that we tend to see something that it's a strange for us, like untouchable or very hard to reach. And I just want to tell everybody that uh, you can achieve much more than you expect just by doing the first step. And this is like Everest. Everest is huge, but you just need to make the first step. And the f that's the hardest one. Mm -hmm. The first move to achieve something that you really aim to do. Because that first step will take you to the second mm -hmm. and to the third. And you will not realize and you will done almost one third or one fourth. And you get closer and closer to the things you want to do. Mm -hmm. So for me, like, I believe I can do anything I want to do. The other thing is if I want to put the time and the energy on that. So, for example, I don't know how to pilot a helicopter. 
I'm sure I, I will be able to do it. The other thing is I want to put my time and my energy in that. No, I don't want to do it. I want to do yeah. something else, something different. But uh, I, I just want to keep people, everybody to know that you can reach anything you want. You just have to put energy. But nothing is like untouchable or just for a special heroes or for a special people with uh, a special talents. Like normal people can achieve extraordinary things just by doing the first step and of course putting the energy okay now that this <laughs> this idea that uh, you bring at the very beginning talking about why i don't want to go back to everest uh it's not that i don't want to go it's that i don't need to know to go because uh there's hundreds of thousands of of mountains, of projects, or, or, or climbs, or trips that I want to do. And I don't have enough time. I mean, life is very short. I already put an amount of energy on this mountain. I enjoy it. It was great. Even if I didn't enjoy it, or I didn't summit a mountain, I don't tend to spend time or energy going again and again. Because uh, if I know I have done all my best, uh i'm satisfied and yeah. that's my point and i move on and i go to do to climb to visit something else and this is like going to 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 a movie it's like <laughs> besides everest that it's the only movie you have to go and see three four or five times yes the rest of the movie you can <laughs> spend all your life the watching things. the same movie yeah because there's a lot just yeah, <laughs> I, I guess I guess it's one of those. Yeah, go ahead, Kat. Go ahead. I absolutely love that. And uh, we were talking earlier that we are theming our gifted and talented teacher workshops this summer around Everest. And I'm like writing things down over here if you're noticing because you're I had one idea, but you're giving me all of these other ideas for the teachers and the students about taking the first step about having grit resilience, you know, taking a chance. Um, all of those things are so super awesome. And this movie just encapsulates those, all of those ideas. It, it has tragedy. It has um, grit. It has coming back, trying again, you know, and, and, and triumphing in a way, you know, on top of all of that. And I think it's just such an amazing metaphor for life in general in, in a lot of ways. And now mm -hmm. I'm getting really pumped up. It's And, and you know, and you know the most strange thing is there is tragedy, but there is no tragedy. Because one of the great parts of this movie, um, we have it inside, the ones we were climbing there. Sure. And I try to share it as much as I can. But, uh, you know, there was a point where the whole tragedy started to happen. In, and uh, we decided that we didn't want to shoot that. We didn't film it. So it's not in the movie because we didn't film it. And when you do that and you are surrounded by people who vote first for their integrity, for their valuables and for their principles against their interest, is then when you know that you are on the right team with the right people doing the right thing. And I think that one of the accomplish of this movie is that we didn't film the tragedy and it became a better movie because of that. Yeah. And that's a great teaching moment too with so much access to filming now and people tend to film things terrible that are happening instead of maybe doing the right thing and helping or intervening in some useful way. So it might be another great teachable moment just for society at large who comes to see it. That is a really great point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we, we live in a world mm -hmm. now where it's sadly, and we see this, you know, I don't even want to, there's so many things going on in the world right now. Currently it's March 2nd, 2022. So you guys understand what I'm saying, but there's so many things that are going on horrible right now. And sometimes it seems like humanity's current uh, drive now isn't to help immediately. It's to pull the phone out and start filming. Document it. We start documenting before we mm -hmm. start helping each other. Uh, and that didn't happen on Everest, especially when you guys were filming this, mm -hmm. this movie. Well, and that's what moved me about the filming mm -hmm. in the first place. I mean, you guys had done all of this preparation, all of, you know, gathering supplies, which is no small feat. It's like Herculean in itself. And you really sacrificed 
yeah. your plans and what you were doing and all of these things to be helpers to make sure that you did the right thing at that time. And I'm getting goosebumps talking about that. Mm -hmm. Can you speak to that a little bit? I yeah, mean, me too. <laughs> yeah, my legs are like tingling on top from the goosebumps because it's such a beautiful story that, you know, there is beauty in, in tragedy sometimes, right? Good stories. I think, I think also that uh, the karma we earn by doing this, um, because we shouldn't never forget the work of the Sherpas. Mm -hmm. And what happens that year is, I mean, the, the, the Sherpas, you want it or not, they tend to be by their own. Because mm -hmm. like, we all do that. We create our own groups and we mm -hmm. separate. And uh, it is hard to make a really consistent team, like the the Sherpa, the, the Sherpa culture, uh, mangling with us and, and trying to be a team. And, and uh, Jamling Norgay did a really good job just being the connection between us and them. But, and, and by doing that, he created a real team, Sherpas and us. And uh, by having that strong team, we managed to get, again, all the equipment we needed to climb the mountain after the tragedy, because we got rid of oxygen, we got rid of tents, the tents were broken, all our food was used during the, 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 the food and the gas and everything we have there, up there. I mean, we, we, we told them, get into our tents and grab everything you need. Mm -hmm. And uh, and of course they did. So when it goes, it was our summit beat, the time we when, when we needed to go up there and, and climb, actually we didn't have enough equipment, but the Sherpas were helping us to go and find a bottle of oxygen here and a bottle of oxygen there. So we managed to climb the mountains thanks to, for, to the Sherpas. And also because, you know, they do their job, which is helping us to establish the camps. And once they have done this, they can leave if they want because oh. they, have the, they have done their job. I mean, of course they didn't. But uh, once you have done your job, your job is done. You cannot buy um, um, the, 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 the soul. You cannot yeah. buy them the, 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 the teamwork. You have to earn it. Right. And they didn't leave because they feel part of the team. Yeah. And they feel part of the team thanks to Jamling. And of course, we try to be as good teammates as possible, but it was a really intense uh, exercise of uh, sharing, empathizing, understanding, communication, and a lot of generosity. Without in, generosity, a team cannot work. In all in this extreme environment that's physiologically stressing to your body and your mind as well too. So you're doing all these incredible things that are hard here, you know, at a reasonable uh, altitude, right? Up in an area where you're already stressed at your very base level. That's pretty impressive. That, that impresses me. I just, I can't even go to Aspen, Colorado without being sick. So I find it just fascinating how people <laughs> do what they do. And like, literally, it's just, I can't, my body, for whatever reason, is like, this is too high. We're, this is high enough. <laughs> you should go back now. So I, I find that fascinating how everybody works together. Because if you don't, it could be tragic, right? If you don't work together. Yeah, a misunderstanding, just a, 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 a misunderstanding. If there's not mm -hmm. enough information, if uh, somebody's too selfish, uh all these little, 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 little things, it's what makes a team work or to break. Yeah. And uh, you need to have, you, you were saying that you get sick when you get healthy to the mean, mm -hmm. you need to have a high spirit, high right. energy. Right. And uh, that comes by being with, uh, with, a, with a team, with a group of people that you share same emotions, you share 
same uh, ways to understand the sport you're doing, the life you're living. Uh, you need to have that really synchrony. And uh, it's an interesting part because, you know, some people believe that you have to be very, very good at something. Like you have, your talent has to be really high. I think talent is uh, over uh, estimated. Like I do, you I need do passion. Too. Yep. With the passion, commitment. you will overcome your lack of talent. Right. Because you will become better and better and better because you love what you do. And when things go wrong, you don't give up because you are passionate. Maybe some talented people will just give up when mm -hmm. things go wrong. With, but not a passionate one. And that was our common thing on this yeah. team. We were all crazy about what we were doing. Well, and sometimes the talented ones aren't used to any failure because they're so used to being good at it and good at it naturally that any kind of setback is just shattering where the person who isn't talented and has had to work hard is used to that setback. And they're like, I'm not going to let that stop me. I'm going to use it to figure out how to be better. And I like that message a lot. I think that's a great message for young people too, because I think we fail to do that. We mm -hmm. focus a lot on talent and less on teamwork. Passion and drive. And passion and drive. Well, it reminds me of how, you know, there's, you know, to pull to pull a, I guess, you know, into an, pull another world into this too. I know that there's a lot of athletes, you know, that maybe play, you know, mainstream sports, but they live, you know, in the Dominican Republic or they live in Cuba or somewhere where there's less resources. And those are the kids that are passionate and driven and they're learning how to play baseball or soccer or whatever, whatever you, you can think of with the minimal amount of equipment and they end up making it to the MLB and they're better than everybody else. It's because I guess fundamentally it's that talent and that drive they work to, harder to work harder to go to go farther and i think when you think about uh, climbing everest you were saying earlier cat and i think aricella you were saying it too that you know our the human body is constantly telling us no don't do this our brains are saying don't this is not good you're not supposed to go this high but it's that passion aricella that you said that it pushes people through and also you were bringing up how you know you're at the top of the earth and everybody's having to share resources and they're having to pull each other together and everything like that it's almost like humanity at its most really like fundamental base level way up there all of the other distractions that we have you know down on you know at, at sea level go away because you're all matter. trying to survive yeah you say that uh, there's a moment that you don't you, you think that about the things that you don't need and actually because uh, not only when when you climb that high uh there's many times when i'm just climbing a, a, a rock climbing road a multi-pitch rock where it's like i don't know 200 300 meters high and uh, you focus just in each move in every move you're doing and for about half an hour an hour two hours the rest of your problems don't exist and uh, there's a way that you clean your mind and uh, you became healthy uh, mentally healthier because you have done that exercise that uh, it's kind of a uh, uh, meditation or, or a mindfulness exercise when uh, when you are able to leave those moments the only thing is that in Everest it takes two months so yeah. you <laughs> co come back completely clean and healthy for the rest of the two or three more years but uh at the end it's a it's a mindfulness exercise that uh, uh rock climbing for me it's one of the uh one of the things that gives me like being able for an for a half an hour or an hour just think about what i'm doing with my hand and nothing else. I'm not thinking about if I have to pay a check or if my mother wants me to call or if my friend, it's a mad of me because I didn't put him a like on Instagram or, <laughs> or any stupid thing that doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. And I get, yeah, you, you, and you, as you described, you, when you're up there, you're working so incrementally and it's every single inch and every twitch of your muscle matters and you're not having to worry about anything else. And that's something that, you know, people that live down here at sea level, we don't 
we don't quite get to that point ever. You know, if we're, you know, if we're, uh, we don't push ourselves very high. And I, I disagree, though. Well, Greg. you know, but it, but it is, but it is true. <laughs> there's there's a certain there's something to be said about pushing yourself to those limits too. And it's almost, and Araceli, you would probably agree with this too. It's almost like a meditative practice up there. It is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, there was something that you say that reminds me about something different. But uh, because it's very close, I don't know. In, in United States, do you ce celebrate the eighth of March as uh, the Women's Day, the International Women's Day? Um, here in Europe, with we use that day as one day of celebrating and uh, to empowering women and our strength and our. Uh, mountain that we have to climb because uh, all the, the the lack of gender equity. Yeah. And when you were saying that thing about isolation, it came to my mind. Uh, one thought, one reflection that I had, uh, and because the eighth of March, it's pretty close. Um, I realized when we were uh, on uh, on this uh, rescue during the tragedy that. Uh, uh, that uh, um, issue that women that we have that uh, somebody sometimes we are not considerate, sometimes we are not good enough, sometimes they think we are not capable of able to do things. Uh, well, you realize that it's an educational stuff because kids when the little kid, children, uh, they don't care if. It, what's on, on your side, it's a man or it's a woman, they grow without that, that, that uh, uh, complex or with that uh, a layer that mm -hmm. overs and block all his uh, potential and, and, and all his fraternity. And uh, that happens on Everest. Uh, you know, all these layers that cover us and, and, and that don't allow us, didn't allow us to feel clearly. You know, when I was helping people up there, uh, they didn't care if the help yeah. came from a man or from a woman. Then when you realize that uh, at the very basics of people, they don't care if you're a man or a woman, because when it really matters, yeah. they take your help. They mm -hmm. take what you are doing. So it's that cover that, that I mean th those layers of uh, culture society our idiosyncrasy our education our I don't know we got role, wrong role models or whatever it's covering us but uh the simplicity of us in a rescue came up also up there yeah. yeah, you don't, nobody cares where the, if you're getting a blood transfusion, you don't care where the blood came from. You know, if you're getting, you know, you, you shouldn't, obviously. And, and it doesn't matter at that point. There's no genders up there. There's no races. There's nothing of that sort. It's just humanity. It's a great each other. equalizer yeah. need in, in that kind of situation. It is a great equalizer and everybody is on equal footing, so to speak. I just did a, mm -hmm. I just did a man joke. Do you see that? <laughs> I, I did a pun or whatever, right? <laughs> I did a joke. Uh, I, yeah, equal footing because you're climbing a mountain. I get it. I get Thanks. it, Kat. You tried. It was uh, even on purpose. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Kat's, Kat's even dressed too like she's mountain climbing today. I did. I wore it for, it's cold down here in the basement. Also hides my gray hair and it's, <laughs> you know, it, it's mountain climbing. So I have a hat. So you, you've obviously, you're not, you're not, you don't well, feel the need the other, to, I'm sorry. I was going to say, well, you don't feel the need to go back to Everest. So what are you doing now? I mean, I know that you're, you're out there, you're doing the motivational speaking thing. You're an author. You're obviously you're a personality now in your own right. Uh, what, what, what sort of stuff gets you excited now? Well, I still just thinking about climbing all the time. I mean, I'm working because I have to, but if I, didn't need to work I will be just climbing but climbing different things as I say two days ago I was ice climbing the road here in the Pyrenees uh, I haven't been able to travel 
lately because all the pandemia and, and we are just hoping that uh, the 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 limits and and, and uh, the the our planes and uh, the whole traveling thing gets back to fluid so uh we can travel with the problems um i used to do one big trip every year uh to climb different places uh i don't know recently we were climbing in uh in, in patagonia uh i've been climbing in uh, peru we went to climbing in Mar madagascar uh we were in canada also recently we were in oman we opened new routes i like m m my real style of climbing is alpinism it's not uh climbing high mountains walking i like to just get in vertical uh wow. walls made of ice and rock and be like a 90 degrees hanging <laughs> Otherwise, is boring. So you like to be at the mercy. So, you you like to be at the. You like to be at the mercy of gravity. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah that's and, scary. Uh, and, and and I live I live on the Pyrenees. Actually, I'm, I'm, I I just went for a short training this morning, and I, I'm just running, skiing, biking, climbing from the from the on, on my backyard. So I'm I'm just enjoying uh the climb but the interesting thing is that uh it's been like a process like you know alpinist and climbing for me it's a philosophy of life but uh it's uh, an evolution like climbing or, or let's say the outdoors uh the outdoors for me when i was a kid they portrayed in a in a way and when I became like on my 20s or 30s, it portrayed in a different way. And now my 50s is portrayed in a completely different way. It, it's not about the difficulty, it's about how I face, how I enjoy or how I observe what, what this sport is giving me. Yeah. And for instance, when I was a kid, it was more like the feeling of the adventure, the pure adventure, facing the unknown and feeling excitement and uh, curiosity and learning from that and learning how to uh, live without knowing what is going to happen. And actually that base for me create my whole career because I like to live without knowing what's going to happen tomorrow. Certainty will kill me. And, mm. and that was when I was a kid. And yeah. then on my 20s, outdoors were something different. It was more the competition. It was more to see how high I can get, how far I can get, how quick I can get, how strong I can be. So it was another different idea. And now it's something, it, there's a still, discovering there's a still adventure there's a still uh getting better in some techniques but that's not as important as now it's more the the spiritual part maybe because i'm getting close to that i don't know because i'm getting older so someday i will disappear and i'm like more exploring that side so i when you say where are you where are you up to i'm up to climbing but in a different perspective and discovering new things and i'm sure that when i will be 80s uh, I, I will still i will still climbing and i will discover something else that I, right now i don't know we're in the same spot i'm in my 50s now too and i totally agree with you my steps and i don't know that everybody's this way mirrored yours exactly and, and I find that fascinating. There's a lot of food for thought here into how we experience the world at different um, ages or different stages in our lives. And as, you know, specifically as women, but people in general as well. Mm -hmm. That is super cool. I'm excited for this movie to come back, guys. Yeah, um, me too. I, I think it's going to, and you know, the GST, the, the Wortham Giant Screen Theater is such an amazing little spot. I don't know if you've ever seen it, Araceli, but it's like an eight story tall screen we have here in Houston. And uh, Everest was one of the first movies I remember seeing the first time around uh, was seen on that big screen and just uh, 
I feel like I'm talking to a movie star. So there, you know, it, it, it's just a, um, I really do hope that people get, um, the motivational aspect that you're speaking of through the movie. I hope people understand that, uh, I know this is going to sound really corny for everybody, but everybody has their Everest to climb. And I hope that they see that in the movie you don't need just because you can't climb a mountain literally like you have, or you do every single day. It seems like everybody's got their mountain to climb and it all depends on how you're going to take on that mountain. So I'm excited for people to see the movie. And I'm going to add, I'm going to add something to the, what you say, which is true. Like everybody has a mountain to climb and the highest mountains to climb are not in the Himalaya are those ones, the ones we face in every day. Yeah. Yep. That's great. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make my daughter Kennedy come in from college and watch this. Um, I think it's, it's, it's going to be great. And I think for a 19 year old young woman, it's going to be a good one too. So excited. Araceli, thank you I'm very much. Araceli, <laughs> thank you very much for, for You're joining with welcome. us. Uh, I know we're keeping you from climbing a mountain right now. So we would, I want you to get back out there. Uh, we're stuck here in Houston below sea level. So, uh, but, um, I'm going to start looking for more Everest in my, uh, in my life. Uh, you've motivated me now, not maybe not to climb a mountain, but maybe there's something else I want to do. So, uh, I'm excited. You're very motivational. Um, yeah, everybody go check out Everest. It opens up here at the Houston museum of natural science. Uh, well, by the time you hear this or watch this on YouTube, you will uh, be able to see the movie in the Worthen giant screen theater. Araceli, thank you all the way from Houston. I know you're in Spain. Thank you for dialing in with us and talking to us. And uh, guys, go climb you. your own Everest. <laughs>